In Stardew Valley, you can be a whole different person. In real life, my houseplants die if I accidentally breathe on them. In Stardew Valley, I cultivate thousands of crops on multiple farms. If a moth gets into my apartment, I have a panic attack until someone else gets rid of it. But when I'm playing Stardew, I happily dump monster musk on myself before diving into the mines. IRL, I'm always secretly happy when plans are cancelled, because that means I can stay curled up on my couch. But in Stardew Valley, you'll see me at every event or passed out at the river at 2am because I just didn't want to go to sleep yet. Concerned Ape has put so much effort into the amount of character customization options, but it's often overlooked. Normally people pick their look at the beginning of the game and change out their hats from time to time if they happen to find one in a treasure chest. At least that's what I do for most playthroughs, but not this time. On this farm, the name of the game is Fashion. The rest of the goals all have to do with being as bougie as possible. Earn at least 1 million gold, get level 10 in all skills, finish the community center, upgrade all my tools to iridium, except the trash can because who cares about the trash can, collect 100 golden walnuts and get access to Key's walnut room, and have one upgraded shed filled with kegs. By the way, I'll be playing a full year, not just 100 days, since I think stopping in the middle of winter is silly, and it's kind of against my religion. But I still aim to accomplish as much as possible in the first 100 days. And I'm using a few mods, but nothing that changes the gameplay. Just some aesthetic stuff. I'll link them in the description below. This playthrough starts like any other, with the character creation. I'll start out looking as boring and basic as I can with a simple black outfit, just like in real life. I'm not interested in fashion at all and kind of feel like Steve Jobs, who famously always wore blue jeans and a black turtleneck to not have to waste brain power on picking out his clothes each morning. I also decided to remix everything and have monsters spawn on my farm. I'll explain why later. Grandpa was looking chic in his matching pajamas and nightcap when he gave me a letter, inheriting Drip Farm to me. Looks like Grandpappy was ahead of his time when it came to fashion terminology. I decided to leave the bland life at Joja Corporation behind me and move to Stardew Valley. On the first day of spring, I wasn't setting any trends yet, when I cleared some land, chopped enough wood for a chest, and got to planting. Then I scythed all the weeds around town for a chance at mixed seeds and picked up any forageables I could find. I got lucky and found my first artifact next to some spring onions. Thank you, good sir. I went through my first trash cans, I want to find the garbage hat, then went to Pierre to buy a single green bean seed. Since I'm playing on the Four Corners farm, I was easily able to get my first copper ores from my little quarry. I got attacked by my first foe on the farm, and since I didn't have a weapon yet, I quickly finished my planting, ran to go get forageables I couldn't pick up before, sold almost everything, and decided to head to bed. Got level 1 foraging. Clint visited me on the morning of day 2 and taught me how to craft furnaces. Thanks, but never come back here and stay away from Emily. I quickly watered my crops, chopped enough wood for a second chest, then headed towards the beach. That's where I met Willie, who gifted me his old fishing rod. After putting the chest down on the pier, I fished until 9am when he opened his shop and I bought the training rod. Right before he closed, I sold all my fish and bought the fiberglass rod and as much bait as possible. Then I continued to fish and stayed at the pier until I passed out. I reached levels 1, 2, and 3 fishing. It was the obligatory rainy day 3 when I made a chest and put it next to the river, where I would be fishing that day. I sold all my fish from the day before to Willy to buy tons more bait, then went to the river to fish the day away. My goal was to get to level 5 fishing and choose the fisher perk. The catfish catching went… awfully, but I managed to catch 6 by the end of the day. The only other notable thing that happened was that I got a treasure chest with a diamond and an ornamental fan. Cool. I love it when a plane comes together. After watering my crops on day 4, I went to town picking up all forageables and a hope wanted quest to give Daddy Willie a dandelion. I found a gold star daffodil that I gave to Caroline, then went to the lake to put down a chest and fish. I met Sebastian in the evening and we hung out there together for a while. I showed him how to fish and he showed me how to smoke without coughing. I fished until I passed out and reached level 6 and 7 fishing. Marnie brought me my little baby Prada on day 5. Hello! I picked my parsnips and watered the rest of the crops, then crafted a second chest since the first one was getting full. The traveling cart was here for the first time today. I thought a lot about getting the snow yam she was selling, but decided against it. It was pretty pricey and I didn't know if I'd need it since the bundles are remixed. Instead, I sold a lot of fish to Willy and gave him his dandelion for 120g. 
Louis let me into the community center for the first time, and it was a real fixer-upper, but I could see the potential and was looking forward to bringing my flair to it. After looking at the scroll I couldn't read, I sold most of the parsnips and some other knickknacks to Pierre and got a backpack upgrade and 11 potato seeds. They were swiftly planted and watered, then I went to the lake and fished until I passed out again. That night I got level 1 farming. Another day, another chest, this time for the mines. I finally got to cuddle Prada for the first time, then had an audience with the wizard. He seemed a bit strange, but I couldn't help but to admire his style. He taught me how to read Junimoish, then I was off to the mines with all the chubs I had caught over the past few days to sustain me. When I got there, Marlin introduced himself and gave me a glorified toothpick he had the audacity to call a sword. While I was down there, I tried to kill all bugs for an ancientcy drop, or at least the bug meat for bait, I guess, and quickly found a special slime with a glow ring, which made me very happy. I also got a diamond from a duggy. By the end of the day, I had made it down to level 16 and got just enough copper for a furnace and 5 copper bars. Got level 2 foraging, level 1 mining, and level 1 combat. It was raining on day 7. I crafted a furnace and… tried <laughs> to smelt my first copper bar. I couldn't decide what to give Louis for his birthday and I thought quartz was a universal like, so I chose that. At the community center, I handed in the spring forage, completing my first bundle. Thank goodness snow yam wasn't part of the winter foraging bundle. I also handed in a parsnip for the spring crops and saw that I had gotten the fish farmer and rare crops bundle. When I found Louis, I gave him the quartz, which he apparently hated. Good choice, me. The traveling cart lady didn't have anything great, so I went to the river to fish. I was hoping to catch lots of catfish, but they kept getting away. On a good note, I did manage to fish up glass shards, a skeletal tail, and a rusty cog in treasure chests. Got level 8 fishing that night. It was raining again on day 8. I planted the 30 spring seeds I had gotten yesterday and finally made my first scarecrow. I went catfish fishing again and was much more successful today, getting 16 catfish by midnight. At that point I was out of bait, so I decided to head home before passing out for a change. The first wilderness golem showed up on my farm. I got excited and tried to slay it to have a chance at the living hat, which only has 1 in 10,000 chance to drop from killing wilderness golems which is still a much higher chance than getting it from scything fiber, which is only 1 in 100,000. But I passed out while fighting it. Level 9 fishing. Day 9 would be important. Gunther gave me cauliflower, melon, and starfruit seeds for all the things I had donated to him, then I headed down to Willy and sold enough fish to buy the iridium rod, some trout soups, trap bobbers, and more bait. I made sure to save enough money to get a copper axe upgrade from Clint. I quickly left that creepy man, went to the lake, ate my trout soup, and fished for the legend. It didn't even really put up a fight, to be honest, and since it was only about midday, I went down to the river and fished for more catfish. I did a whoopsie and passed out while fishing without getting a level up. Day 10 was Vincent's birthday. After planting the cauliflower seeds and watering my crops, I decided to clean up my farm a bit. I went into town to donate everything I could to the community center and realized I hadn't caught river fish in town yet. There were two perfectly good daffodils on the ground, so I gifted one to Caroline and one to Vincent. After that, the sunfish and smallmouth bass were quickly fished up, and I just went back to continue cleaning up the farm. At the end of the day, I had reached level 2 mining from cleaning up all the rocks. Day 11, it was raining again, and it was a really good luck day. My potatoes and the first green bean were ready to be harvested. I was torn between the mines and fishing, but I just had to take advantage of the catfish. So while I was waiting for 9 o'clock to roll around, I checked the trash cans in town, then received my new copper axe from Clint and went straight back to the river to fish. I only took a quick break to get Robin's lost axe and catch an eel at the beach. I got it on my first cast, then went straight back to the river for more catfish, and even got 4 rubies from a single treasure chest. Still no level up in fishing, so I went back to the farm to be in bed by 12. Day 12 I made some room for the strawberries I would be getting tomorrow and finally sold the oodles of fish I had saved for this occasion. I was already on my way to the mines when I remembered the traveling cart was here. God is good. Even though I didn't know if I would need it, I bought the cabbage seed, put it in a chest so I wouldn't lose it, and skipped happily to the mines. Progress was kinda slow, but on level 24 I broke open a crate that had the forest sword in it, which would definitely speed things up. Made it down to level 29 and got level 3 mining at the last second before passing out. Day 13 was the big day. When I walked outside, Demetrius was waiting for me, and I chose the fruit bats. Hashtag Team Edward. I didn't have the time or energy to finish prepping everything for the strawberries, but I made sure to take a freshly grown cauliflower and a green bean with me. After talking to everyone and buying 150 strawberry seeds, I spent some time dreaming of days when I could change my whole outfit, not just my hat. 
Then, the hunt was on. I must have been feeling the pressure, because I just barely got enough eggs to beat Abigail. But the first piece of swaggy clothing was mine. The straw hat. I was transported back to my house at 10 p.m., put on my lovely new hat, then went straight to the community center and handed in the missing vegetables to do the old get 20 speakers from the spring crops bundle in order to get a third harvest from some of the strawberries trick. I ran as fast as my little legs could carry me to put down the speed grow and the seeds and went to bed. On day 14, I went outside to plant the rest of my strawberries, having to eat multiple chubs to get the job done, and crafted two more scarecrows. The traveling cart lady had a truffle for 3,125 G. I decided I had some gold to spare and got it just in case I needed it. I also realized that I still had to gift Haley for her birthday. I only had a green bean on me, which was what I would have to give her to even make it to her in time. I had this sinking feeling it wouldn't be a great gift, and yeah, no. I got level 3 foraging that night, which meant we can now make tappers. Perfect. Day 15 was pretty uneventful. I was able to harvest the 30 spring seeds, then decided to make more and plant them on the open tilled spots. I watered everything as fast as I could, then went to the mines on this good luck day. It went well, and I got some pretty good drops, including another glow ring. I made it down to level 45 by the end of the night and passed out in the mines, getting level 2 combat. It was another rainy day on day 16. I made two more furnaces and smelted more copper bars. I decided to chop down trees and hardwood stumps until I hit level 4 foraging because it's salmonberry season, and I want two berries per bush. I brought my pickaxe and five copper bars to Clint to get an upgrade, then headed to the river to fish for more catfish, because why not? At about 9pm, I decided to walk around the cindersap forest to get all the salmon berries and forageables and tried to get back to bed before 2am to avoid the gold penalty, but I fell asleep amongst the slimes and strawberry crops. I got level 4 foraging and level 10 fishing and went with the pirate perk, because I just can't resist surprises. The spirits were perturbed on day 17 and my pickaxe was upgrading. So after watering everything, all I did for the rest of the day was clean up more around the farm. At some point, I started to get attacked by a bat and only had my scythe, so I made a mad dash for my chest to get my sword. I really need to remember to keep it with me from now on. Towards the end of the day, I went into Cindersap Forest to gather more salmon berries and was back in bed by midnight. On day 18, my pickaxe was finished upgrading. I watered all crops, and can't wait to never have to say that again, and saw Pam on the way to Clint's, handing her a parsnip for her birthday, which she loved. After getting my pickaxe, I picked up a few daffodils and gave one to Evelyn and the gold star one to Caroline. I also got an eel from a trash can. In the mines, I slayed all the dust sprites and mined all the iron ore I could find. I got combat boots from the chest on level 50 and another glow ring from a slain ghost. Like game, I get it. You want me to shine as bright as my designing talent will be someday, but I have enough glow rings now. Thank you. I made it down to level 56 by the end of the night before passing out again. Level 4 mining. Day 19 was a good luck Friday, and I went on a cross. I went down to the traveling cart, saw a battery for 1500G, and decided to buy it so I could complete the boiler room today and get the minecarts unlocked. I got Clint to open as many geodes as I could, and donated all the gems and artifacts I had to Gunther. Hmm, can you really sell these? After finishing the boiler room, I got a small magnet ring and two furnaces as rewards. I don't know what's happening here. I took a look at the bulletin board bundles and felt like a prophet. Both the red cabbage and truffle were needed, so my traveling cart purchases had paid off. The Junimo put the star up and we celebrated together before I headed to the mines. I made it down to level 64 where I had to choose between a ladder down to level 65, which would give me the next elevator, and smashing the big pile of barrels. I chose the barrels because, like I said, I can't resist surprises. It wasn't worth it. That night, the Junimos repaired the minecarts and I got level 3 combat. Y'all, day 20 was rainy again. I came outside to find the first 20 strawberries ready to be picked. There were some forageables for the crab pot bundle on the beach that I picked up before I headed to Willie's and sold everything to him, including a chub I wanted to hand into the community center. <sighs> I went to the community center again to hand stuff in, including the truffle, completed the construction bundle, and got a charcoal kiln, which I never use. I found Shane at Joja and was torn between giving him a daffodil or a strawberry for his birthday. I decided on the daffodil, which was a mistake. I paid Clint to upgrade my hoe to copper, then went back to the river for catfish money. The Queen of Sauce taught me how to make radish salad on day 21, one of the only reasons anyone would ever plant radishes. 
After picking strawberries, I decided to craft my first two tappers and put them on the oak trees at the bus stop. That day, the traveling cart was selling a pumpkin, which did tempt me, since that's normally the last thing I have to hand into the pantry room. I decided I needed to save money, so I didn't get it. But I must say, the traveling cart lady has really been pulling through on this save file. The rest of the day was dedicated to getting deeper in the mines. I got a coffee bean from a dust sprite and made it down to level 74 where I passed out. Level 3 farming and level 5 mining. Chose the minor perk. It was a super good luck day and raining again on day 22. Guys, I don't think I'll be getting any rainy days in summer. This is ridiculous. The majority of my strawberries and all of the spring forageables I had planted were ready. Clint opened some geodes for me and agreed to upgrade my axe to steel. Gunther forked over 9 pumpkin seeds and a rare crow for the minerals I gave him. Then I bought 30 potato seeds from Pierre and went back to the farm to plant them together with the coffee bean from the mines. I was very tempted to go fishing for more catfish, but I badly needed ores, since I could smell level 6 farming coming up soon and I wanted to put down sprinklers as soon as possible. Thanks to the super good luck, I got tons of iron and gold and two bone swords, which were great weapon upgrades. Got level 4 and level 5 farming and chose the tiller profession as well as level 4 combat. Thankfully, day 23 was a good luck day again. So after watering the crops and smelting some gold bars, it was back to the mines. A squid kid dropped a squid ink for me, which I would need for the fish farmer's bundle. I also found a tempered broadsword in a barrel and got to floor 100, where a star drop filled my mind with thoughts of ice. Get it? Like expensive jewelry. I made it all the way down to level 108, where I passed out, as has become tradition. Level 6 Mining Everything was going wonderfully on day 24. I picked some strawberries, which put me over the threshold to level 6 farming. The flower dance festival was on, but watering everything took too long, and I didn't really feel like standing in the corner after having given everyone the most awful gifts anyway. I thought I'd be smart by putting my five furnaces next to the lake. I could do some multitasking by smelting and fishing. Then, disaster struck when Sebastian came along and walked straight through all of my furnaces. I did everything just like before, but was a bit quicker since I already knew my route. When I got to the lake, I put the furnaces at the very bottom, in the hopes that no one would decide to stand there. When Sebastian arrived again, I bullied him and gave him a salmon berry as punishment. Got level 6 farming that night and finally had access to sprinklers. Hallelujah. I got straight to work crafting and putting down sprinklers on day 25. I can't see what I'm doing. Why is it like this? I watered everything by hand for the last time and decided to craft a few more sprinklers since I still had some bars left over and I would want to increase my crop size in summer. After getting my steel axe from Clint, I gave Caroline another daffodil and stopped by the saloon where I apparently talked to Gus for the first time, finally completing the introductions quest. Sorry my dude. The axe was put to work on my farm right away where I just chopped wood for the rest of the day. That night, I got level 5 foraging and chose the gatherer perk. Day 26 was the ninth rainy spring day, so my sprinklers couldn't show off their skills yet. There were lots of strawberries to be picked, which was very nice. A whole red cabbage? You're spoiling me. But I have a seed, so I'll pass. I was able to get into the secret woods with my new axe, where I found tons of horseradishes and one morel that thankfully turned into two because of my new foraging perk. I wasn't sure what to give Pierre for his birthday, but I finally wanted to give someone a present they liked. So I decided on a diamond, which I assumed he would be pleased with. He was. I could hear the siren song of the catfish, so I went to the river for the rest of the day. On my way to bed, I was finally able to slay my first wilderness golem on the farm, but it didn't drop a living hat. Got level 7 farming. Day 27, I relished in seeing the sprinklers in action. At Pierre's, I walked into my favorite cutscene of the game. I didn't take the tea leaf. It fell off and whooshed into my backpack, that's all. Next, I went to Clint to open geodes and donated a few things to the museum. I decided to take the two painting rewards with me to see if you could really sell them. It turns out you can't. And that'll have to do, I guess. I wanted to get my foraging up to level 6 in time for summer to be able to make lightning rods, so that's the skill I worked on for the rest of the day. While I was in the secret woods, I slayed three slimes, so although I didn't get a level up in foraging, I did get level 5 combat. I also found Linus going through the trash cans and told him there was nothing wrong with dumpster diving. I'm right there with you, buddy. The last day of spring started off wonderfully. 
I got the tea sapling recipe in the mail, so I immediately made as many as I could, then picked my last spring crops. I decided to ship as much as possible since I would need money for summer crops tomorrow. I caught a wood skip in the secret woods on my first cast, then decided to spend the rest of this very good luck day in the mines, farming copper and fiber and hoping to get an ancient seed drop from a bug. I got the monster slayer goal for killing 125 of the suckers, but none of them dropped the seed. That night, I got level 7 mining and level 6 foraging, which meant lightning rods. Day 29 was the first day of summer, and I was hoping this would be the season I could finally kick off my career as a designer. I was super sad to see all the dead strawberries, but got to work scything everything down, tilling and watering all the spots that had to be fixed, and went into town to buy seeds. One tomato, three peppers, one of each flower, 10 hops, one corn, one sunflower, a few melons, and 223 blueberries. Back on the farm, I started planting everything and realized I'd have to make more sprinklers, since I had bought too much. Since I still felt rich, I decided to get the last backpack upgrade from Pierre's and upgrade my pickaxe to steel at Clint's. I spent the whole rest of the day tilling, planting, and watering everything. On day 30, I felt extreme relief to see all the crops watered by my sprinklers, so my watering can went straight into a chest. I found a grape and a sweet pea and handed both of them into the community center, completing the summer forageables bundle and getting 30 summer seeds in return. I headed to Robin's, but was a bit early, so I had to wait. These flowers are nice. It was a Tuesday, which meant I had to wait until she walked past her cash register on her way to her aerobics class. This is less pretty. When trying to pick a new spot for my coop, I saw a slime on my farm, then went down to the ocean to fish the dayway and catch the new fish. Digging through the trash on my way there, I was reprimanded by Lewis. I wanted to get the summer legendary fish out of the way, so I headed to the bottom of the eastern pier. I caught the crimson fish right away, then spent the rest of the day there. Lewis asked me to get his purple shorts on day 31. Maybe he thinks trash armatures are good at doing such dirty deeds. I saw that my steel pickaxe was ready at Clint's, so I took five copper bars and my watering can to go see him and handed them in in return. Ooh, cool. I got to work deforesting all of Cindersap Forest when I passed by the hat mouse and decided it was finally time to change up my look. I bought the good old cap because I thought it might be something a lumberjack would wear and looked quite snazzy, if I do say so myself. I felt very good about what I had done while walking home through the barren forest, then continued the deforestation on my own farm. I found another wilderness golem, but still didn't get the living hat. Big surprise. Day 32, my coffee plant was ready to be harvested for the first time. When I visited Robin working on the coop, the slime was still there. It would be a cute farm mascot, but I decided it would just get in the way, so I killed it with a heavy heart. Sleep tight, sweet prince. There had been a strange noise in the night, so I went through the backwoods where I placed a tapper on a pine tree and up to the railroad. I put down gravel pathing and planted all the acorns I had to start an oak resin farm. The rest of the day would be dedicated to getting to the bottom of the mines. Made it to level 120 just in time before passing out. Robin was finished with the coop on day 33. The traveling cart was selling a lobster and some rare seeds, which I bought three of. After that, I visited Marnie and bought four chickens. Down, like down feathers, Chanel, Gucci, and Burberry? Question mark? Spelling unclear. You can see how fashionable I am in real life. Then I visited Robin and asked her to build me a barn. I was still loaded, so I picked up my watering can from Clint and got the gold pickaxe upgrade. I saw Alex on his way to the ice cream stand and talked to him, but I don't know why I did because he was just rude to me. I spent the rest of the night fishing at the ocean and went back home in time to sell my fish and be in bed by midnight. On day 34, my first hot peppers were ready to be picked. I decided to craft some lightning rods and put them down around the crops, then got to see my chickies on the farm for the first time. Well, I couldn't technically see them because they were so little, but they were easy to find thanks to the UI mod. I was able to finish the crab pot bundle with the lobster I had bought from the traveling cart and was rewarded with three crab pots. I also finished the exotic foraging bundle and got five autumn's bounties. Evelyn was looking for someone to bring her seaweed, so I accepted her quest. I talked to Alex again and regretted it again. Are you having a stroke? The rest of the day was spent fishing at the beach. Before heading to bed, I shipped all my fish and as I lay my head to rest, I heard a faint hoot in the night. I pet my chickies on day 35, as I will do every day from now on. 
While I was checking the trash cans in town, I talked to Alex against my better judgment and was confirmed in my bias against him. You would do that, Alex. I found a mussel and a crab in my crab pots, then settled in on the pier and got to octopus hunting. It finally took the bait, and after a hard-fought battle, I reeled it in. I went to go fish up some new fish from the river and got a rainbow trout and a dorado, but couldn't get a pike to bite. I gave Evelyn the seaweed she had asked for, who looked lovely in her yellow summer outfit, then went to the mines and tried to get a stonefish. It didn't bite either, unfortunately, but at least I could add white algae and a ghost fish to my fishing log. My chickens were fully grown on day 36, so I crafted four mayo machines and put them in the coop. I headed into the secret woods to get the fiddlehead fern that only spawns in summer and decided to chop some hardwood while I was there. In town, I gave Gus a nice orange for his birthday, picked up a help wanted quest to give Jody a hot pepper, took an apricot I had gotten from the back cave to the community center for the artisan bundle, and then went to Robin's and commissioned a fish pond. I spent the rest of the day in the iron levels of the mine, looking for ores and dust sprites. I was in bed by 2am and got level 7 foraging. The sunflower spangle and some summer forageables were ready to be harvested on day 37. I replaced them with more summer seeds, and after turning all of the eggs into mayo, I brought Jody her pepper. Once that was done, I hit up the iron levels of the mine again. The ores were plentiful since it was a very good luck day. It was past midnight and I was about to go home, but I found a special slime on level 67 that I wanted to slay, which dropped me a shadow dagger. I decided to stay a bit longer to slay the dust sprites before heading out, and thank god I did. They dropped me a friggin' prismatic shard. Look at it! That night, I got level 8 farming, which meant kegs, and level 6 combat. I was able to harvest my precious red cabbage on day 38. After picking it and doing a celebratory dance, I went to Robin to get a coop upgrade. Once I handed in the cabbage to the dye bundle, I went to Marnie to buy four cows. Napa, like the leather, but apparently kind of spelled wrong. Cowhide, linen, and velour. I gave Mara a strawberry for her birthday, then decided to go to the lake to fish for sturgeon. I put down furnaces again to smelt iron bars, a decision I kind of regretted. I mean, look at this. He won't even stop walking during the fishing minigame. Back on the farm, I had fished up so many rainbow trout that I decided to put three into the fish pond, hoping to quickly max it out for lots of row for the fish farmer's bundle. After putting tree fertilizers on my oak trees at the railroad, I headed to bed. Day 39 was pretty uneventful. After smelting some more bars and taking care of my chickens and new cows, I went through all the trash cans in town before heading to the luau. Once there, I made sure to talk to everyone to get those precious friendship points and put a gold star cucumber from one of my latest fishing adventures into the soup. So good it'll make you want to slap your grandma. Day 40 still says day 39 at the top. Don't worry, it'll be fixed by tomorrow. Quite a few things were ready for harvest and I bought 18 pieces of hay from Marnie, 8 for my animals and 10 for the community center, as well as a milk pail, since my cows would be producing milk soon. I handed in a few new things to the community center and picked up a help wanted quest to get Pam a puffer fish. After I got Clint to open more geodes and donated everything I could to Gunther, I went to the ocean to get Pam's fish and picked up all the forageables that had spawned because of crab mating season, I guess. Pam was at the saloon and gave me 600 G as a reward. I decided to use this opportunity to say hi to everybody and danced with Demetrius, who looked quite lonely without Robin, since she was still working on my coop. Day 41 was a stormy day, just as predicted, which was actually very fitting weather because it was Alex's birthday. My melons were ready for harvest and I decided to be the bigger person and save Alex an egg. After bringing a melon to the community center and an egg to Alex, I bought more melon seeds from Pierre to replant them. I found an oyster and a lobster waiting for me in the crab pots in the ocean, then fished up the red snapper, which can only be caught on rainy days. Demetrius started threatening me when I walked into the carpenter shop. Dude, I'm only here to buy a silo. That evening, I accidentally sold the red snapper I had caught, so I went to bed a bit saddened. Lots of things happened on day 42. I came outside to my beautiful blueberries and my single star fruit being fully grown. My lightning rods had also produced their first batteries. The rainbow trout wanted three purple mushrooms, which I didn't have at the moment, but I would try to find some in the mines soon. Marnie sold me a duck that I called boa, like a feather boa, and I went to Pierre to sell him all my blueberries except for one, which I used to complete the summer crops bundle. As a reward, I got a quality sprinkler. I also bought all of the vault bundles and got three chocolate cakes, 30 quality fertilizers, one lightning rod, and a crystallarium. I went to Clint's and got a gold axe upgrade, fished in the river and finally caught the pike, 
then went back to the farm and put down the new sprinkler, planted eight more summer seeds, and put a jade into my new crystallarium. I crafted four cheese presses and 11 tree tappers, put the tappers on the oak trees up at the railroad, put a chest for gifts right next to the entrance of the farm, and put the cheese presses into the barn. I also got to slay another wilderness golem that did not drop the living hat. That night, the Junimos repaired the bus and I got level 9 farming. The cows were ready to be milked for the first time on day 43. I sold one for the shipping collection and turned the rest into cheese. Then I headed straight to the copper levels of the mines and tried to get as many ores and slay as many monsters as I could in the hopes of an ancient seed or a dwarf scroll 4, which was the last one I needed. Now that the bus was repaired, I wanted to be able to talk to the dwarf and be able to buy his explosive wares as soon as possible. I had no luck with the artifacts, but I stopped at level 20 to fish up a stonefish. I wanted to be in bed by 2am, but passed out right outside of my house next to a wilderness column. I bet that would have been the one. Level 8 Mining On day 44, I turned off the petting icons of the UI mod because they were starting to annoy me, then took care of my babies and processed their goods. In town, I picked up a quest for Penny to get a super cucumber, which went perfectly with my plans for the day. I looked up walking paths on the pier online so I could be certain no NPCs would walk there, then put my furnaces in a safe place and started to fish for money for the next barn upgrade. Unfortunately, it was kind of annoying because I kept hopping onto the bench when smelting ores. The only other thing I did was pick up my gold axe from Clint. Day 45 was a bit... scattered. To make a long story short, I wanted a barn upgrade but didn't have enough money or wood. I wanted to get money from selling stuff to Pierre and by cleaning up my quest log, failing to realize it was a Wednesday, which meant no Pierre. It was also almost impossible to find Penny or Jody, and my plan ultimately failed. To top it all off, I just barely didn't make it to Sam in time to give him a Jojo Cola for his birthday. To make myself feel better about this kinda sucky day, I got a new hat from the Hat Mouse. A lucky bow. Maybe it'll help me out tomorrow. The bloobs were ready again on day 46. I went to Robin's, but was disappointed again, because apparently she has plans on summer 18. Ugh, this lucky bow is not paying off. Then I bought my first ticket to the desert and did the most important deed first. I got the galaxy sword. I chopped the trees, foraged, fished to get a sandfish and a scorpion carp, and hoed the artifact spots and got really lucky by getting a golden mask, which is normally one of the last artifacts I get. I visited Sandy and bought 25 beet seeds in prep for fall, then took a look at the desert trader's wares and was reminded of how many omni geodes I would have to save up in the long run. Oh brother. The skull caverns would have to wait for another day. Boa was fully grown on day 47 and immediately dropped me a duck feather, something I still needed for the community center. The traveling cart lady wasn't selling anything worth my time, so I finally went to Robbins and got the frickin' barn upgrade. Demetrius got a strawberry for his birthday, then I crafted 14 more tappers and put them on the other oak trees at the railroad. My rainbow trout had been asking for three purple mushrooms for quite some time, so I decided to go to levels 80 plus of the mines, also in hopes of getting that stupid dwarf scroll 4. I hoed all the dirt patches I found, and I did get a scroll, but the wrong one. Also no luck with the mushrooms, so I headed to bed at 1am. Day 48, I handed in the duck feather and a sturgeon I had been saving to the community center, finishing the lake fishing bundle. It was a super bad luck day, but I still decided to go back to the mines, doing the same thing as yesterday. I was even kind of hopeful, since bad luck means more enemies, means more chances to get a dwarf scroll drop. From a mining point of view, it didn't feel very unlucky. By the end of the day, I had a pretty good haul, even a single purple mushroom, but I still couldn't find the scroll and felt very dumb with my dinky hoe on these huge patches of dirt. I vowed to get a hoe upgrade the next day. Level 7 combat. Day 49 was a super good luck day, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go to the Skull Caverns. I was not well prepared at all. No stockpile of cheese, no opportunity to buy bombs from the dwarf, and no ore to craft any myself. But I wanted to at least try and see how far I got. I took 5 iron bars on my hoe to Clint, where I got an emerald from the trash, got the upgrade just as I had sworn yesterday, then waited for Pam at the bus stop. Once at the desert, I traded diamonds for triple shot espressos, rubies for spicy eels, quartz for bombs, jades for staircases, and was sad to see that I couldn't get cheese, which you can apparently only get on Fridays. I staircased the first levels, but was out on level 15, so I had to continue the old-fashioned way. Hitting each normal rock with two swings felt painfully slow, but I didn't want to waste bombs. I got a treasure chest with two energy tonics on level 18, which made me more optimistic about my chances of survival. 
I found my favorite enemies for this playthrough and the real reason I had wanted to come here on level 34. Mummies. Mummies drop cloth, and cloth means fashion. Can you hear that? That's the sound of my designing career revving up. Passed out on level 101 and got level 9 mining that night. I took a look at my haul the next day. Sure, I've had many better runs before, but I thought it was pretty amazing for a first trip without proper tools. Then I walked out into my most highly anticipated cutscene with Emily, giving me access to her sewing machine. I could finally get into the real drip farm business. I also got a letter from Mr. Key, challenging me to get to level 25 in the Skull Caverns. I thought that dude was omniscient. I went to go visit Emily and walked in on her dreaming about me and how our lives would intersect. You have no idea how true that is, Emily. I took a deep breath and prepared myself for the glorious moment of getting to use the sewing machine for the first time. I used the prehistoric tibia I had gotten from Pepperex yesterday to make a hair bone in commemoration of my first Skull Caverns dive, and a lemon stone to make a happy shirt, because that reflected my mood best. While I walked back out into the world with my new fit, I could tell that the next half of this series would be awesome. I picked up a strange help wanted quest to give Sandy a cactus fruit, even though she's surrounded by the stuff, then bought an apple tree from Pierre for the fodder bundle. I went home, planted my new apple tree, and went up to the railroad to see that my oak resin farm was slowly starting to pay off before going to Robbins to buy some wood and get the last barn upgrade I desperately needed. I also decided to buy her recipes and a workbench, then spent all the money I had left over on wood. I sold the gear that was piling up to Marlin and started to set up a crafting area on the farm. I didn't really have a good spot at the moment, but it would have to do for now. When I went to sleep, I got level 10 farming and chose the artisan profession, as well as level 8 foraging. Day 51, I got a letter from Mr. Key with 10,000 G for making it to level 25 in the Skull Caverns. I visited Marnie and bought a goat named Versace, but accidentally spelt wrong because that's how high class I am. Afterwards, I went to Clint, picked up my new hoe, opened the geodes I had, and hid it in my pickaxe for an iridium upgrade. I fished at the ocean until I got the red snapper again, and immediately went to hand it into the community center. That completed the ocean fish bundle and got me five ocean warp totems. Then I went to the desert to give Sandy that cactus fruit. I just sorted chests and scythe grass for the rest of the day. Apparently, I had donated 60 things to the museum, because on the morning of day 52, Gunther was outside my door and gave me the rusty key. Robin agreed to build me a horse stable, and when I went into town, I had to explain to Penny that it's not appropriate to shove people in wheelchairs. It was Willie's birthday, and when I went to visit him, I found the last thing I needed from crab pots in the ocean. A shrimp. After giving him his birthday diamond, I went to the sewers for the first time, where I met Krobus and bought a void egg. The first bite in the sewers was the legendary mutant carp. Afterwards, I went straight to the mines to catch an ice pip, then went back to the farm to craft some machines and a few tea saplings. Day 53, I went to Marnie's where I bought my first sheep, which I normally never buy, and called it McQueen, like as in Alexander McQueen. I also bought an autograver that went straight into my barn. Look how cute and fluffy she is! I gave Dimitri some melon he had asked for, then found George and gave him the hot pepper for his knee. He told me he couldn't talk and probably wanted to rub the pepper on his knee in private, so I left and went to Clint. With my iridium axe in hand, I headed to the mines to farm iron, coal, and dust sprites for the rest of the day. Got level 8 combat that night. The next day, the last harvest of blueberries was ready. My horse stable was finished and I named my new horsey Gingham. I took her to Pierre's to sell all the blueberries, and then we visited Clint to get him to upgrade my watering can to steel. I was already itching to change my outfit again, so I tailored pine seed into a beanie and made a shirt with granite. I was trying to go for a foresty look, but I ended up looking more like I was going to mug someone. Oh well. Gingham got my hair bone hand-me-down, then we galloped to Robbins to commission a second fish pond. I went into the mines to get more copper, still hoping for an ancient seed or a dwarf scroll. Alas, no luck. This has definitely got to be one of the most unlucky playthroughs I've had when it comes to the ancient seed. I was kind of unsure what to do on day 55. After finishing the artisan bundle with a jelly and getting a keg in return, I bought lots of weed seeds from Pierre to keep the hoed spots tilled for fall. Then I went back to the mines, determined to find the dwarf scroll. I thought my new fit might help scare it out of enemies, but it didn't. I even got a rare disc as a drop, but still no scroll. The enemies on my farm seemed to be getting tougher because I found a shadow brute waiting for me. 
I thought they might have the scroll, but they also disappointed me. Sad. Day 56 was the night of the moonlight jellies. I still felt defeated from yesterday, but after picking my last summer crops, I decided to head back to the mines with gingham and try again. I hoed the ground and started getting way too many cave carrots again, but then it happened. I got the scroll and did a little victory dance. I had to pause to think about what to do with my life now, then decided to mine copper for the rest of the day until the festival started. At the beach, I made sure to talk to everyone as always. Don't be alarmed guys, it's just me. You can keep your wallets. I also bought a starport decal because I wanted to see how it looked in my house. Of course, it winds up in a chest, never to be seen again. Then we watched the jellies migrate south for the winter. I stood sadly in the midst of my dead blueberries that had served me so well on day 57, then got to scything. I put a sturgeon into my new fish pond and knew this season called for an outfit change, but unfortunately I only had one cloth. I wanted an autumnal look, so I went to Emily's sewing machine and used an oak resin to tailor a floppy beanie, which looked a little less menacing than the regular one. At Pierre's, I bought 11 more pumpkin seeds, one eggplant, seven amaranth, three fairy rose seeds, and spent the rest of my 41,000 G on cranberries. I went home to plant it all, putting Deluxe Speed Grow on the rare seeds, eggplant, and one of the pumpkins. I picked up my new watering can from Clint, and donated the last dwarf scroll and the rare disc to Gunther, and finally got the dwarvish translation guide. I also found my first wool in the auto grabber in the barn, which meant McQueen was fully grown. Day 58 was a rainy day. I made a loom and put it in the barn, which meant I could start making my own cloth without having to go on Skull Caverns runs. I went to the secret woods, kind of hoping for purple mushrooms, but there were none there. Stupid rainbow trout asking for stupid purple mushrooms. I went to the river to start catching the new fall fish, and at some point I got a chest with a treasure chest and a diamond inside. That loot stood in stark contrast to the hobo hipster chic I was sporting. When I went into town, Lewis and Robin were setting up the special orders board, and I decided to get the one to ship 100 amaranth. When I handed Penny an emerald for her birthday, I felt kind of bad for her, sitting alone in her trailer, so I sat with her for a few minutes before heading to the community center. There, I was able to complete three fishing bundles and the whole fish tank, giving me 30 bait, a dish of the sea, and a small glow ring. I honestly should have made a counter for all the glow rings I've gotten in this playthrough. While I slept, the Junimas removed the glittering boulder. On day 59, I took care of my animals and saw that my very first self-made cloth was ready. Also, my void chicken had hatched and I named her Zipper. After completing the fall foraging bundle, as well as picking up a help wanted quest to give Demetrius a super cucumber, I visited Emily and our new parrot that had flown into our window, then tailored some relaxed shorts with a peach from my bat cave. I did my usual trash can run and couldn't care less about Alex finding me disgusting for doing it. On my way to Robin's to get a house upgrade, Willie gifted me another tool, this time a copper pan to pan for ores. I wasn't happy about it, but I decided I couldn't just not put it on my head. So I donned my new special kid headgear, at least for today. I mean look, even concerned Abe is disappointed in me. I decided to fish up the legendary fish of fall, the angler, and spend the rest of the day fishing in the ocean with Daddy Willie. Day 60, I went to Pierre's to get the 100 amaranth seeds I would need. After planting them on all the open spots, I still had exactly 48 seeds left, so I dedicated the rest of the day to start planning out my farm. I crafted some iridium sprinklers and pathing, cleared off all of the debris on the upper left quadrant, and laid out where everything would go. I kinda wasn't liking how the wood colors were clashing with the earthy recolor mod I had, and might have to do something about it. I downloaded a new mod for darker pathing, and it looked a lot better on day 61, even though I would have liked to have a different brick color, but what are you gonna do? I happened to pick up a plum from the bus stop, and the only reason I'm telling you this is because after handing in the eggplant to the fall crops bundle, I got a help wanted quest from Pam for a plum. I was like, sure, I'll take your money for picking up something that was right next to you, you doofus. The copper pan was weighing heavy on my soul and my loaf, so I went to Emily's sewing machine and tailored my own dwarvish helmet to wear. I found Elliot in town and gave him his birthday pomegranate, then fished at the mountain lake for the rest of the night. I caught a midnight carp at exactly midnight, which was neat. Day 62, I woke up in a much larger house. I crafted and sold some tea saplings to Pierre, which netted me 25,000 G, so I got the wood and stone I still had, 
bought the missing resources from Robin, and got the final coop upgrade. After having looked at that exclamation mark above my rainbow trout pond for weeks, I spent the rest of the day looking for those darn purple mushrooms. I went to the mines, but couldn't find a mushroom floor to save my life. At the very end of the day, I was super low on energy and health when I saw a single purple mushroom. I snuck my way past the slime to get it and was very relieved that nothing attacked me on my farm when I headed to bed. The beets were fully grown on day 63, so I harvested them, shipped 14, kept one for the community center, and 10 for my plan for the day. I brought a battery to the dark tunnel that Gingham was too scared to go into, brought a rainbow shell up to the railroad and put it in the box, took a quick break from Mr. Keith's scavenger hunt to hand in one beat to the community center, completing the dye bundle and getting a seed maker, then took the other 10 beets and put them in Louis' fridge. After buying some rice and pumpkin seeds from Pierre, I didn't have enough money for a ticket to Calico Desert, so the sand dragon's final meal would have to wait. I came outside to a field full of cranberries on day 64. After harvesting everything, I made a maki roll and fried up an egg, then took a look at the special quests board. I was extremely torn between the two tasks, but went with the prismatic jelly quest. I want that burglar's ring, and being able to make more dust sprites spawn would help me achieve that goal. I had another bolt of cloth, so I used Emily's sewing machine to tailor a jamborite into a green thumb shirt. It clashed with my pink shorts, so I decided to try out the dyeing pots for the first time. At first, I was kind of confused about how they worked, but realized I'd need an item for every color, not just the one I was going for. I handed in the fried egg and the maki roll, completing the chef's bundle, and got a pink cake. Back at Emily's, I turned the shorts a nice blue to make it look like I was wearing little overalls. I bought some yam and lots of pumpkin seeds and filled up all of the new sprinkler spots I had created. Planting everything took up the rest of the night. I will never get a living hat from these wilderness golems. Marnie was outside my door on day 65 to ask me for a cave carrot. I made another mayo machine for zipper's eggs, as well as 29 cakes. They were filled with melons, then I took my furnaces and ores to the mines and kept smelting ores while spamming floor 5 to find the prismatic slime. After finding another glow ring in a crate, I found the little sucker almost immediately and felt a bit aimless, but decided to grind out dust sprite kills for the rest of the day. Sorry little buddies. Day 66. I made some signs for my fish ponds. Stupid rainbow trout. And also added a sign to my crop area, where I could at least keep a memory of the prismatic jelly. It just looks so cool. My speed grow pumpkin was ready, so I brought it to the community center, completing the fall crops bundle and getting a bee house for it. Handing the wizard the jelly netted me 5,000 G, and I found my first chanterelle in the secret woods. After chopping all the stumps there, I dropped the cave carrot at Marnie's feet, then went back to my farm to get the furnaces and did the old smelting bars while fishing, this time at the river, which went swimmingly, since there were no NPCs walking around to destroy my stuff. The wizard had sent me the recipe for monster musk in the mail on day 67, and the 100 amaranth were ready, so I harvested it all and shipped it with the fish from yesterday. I immediately crafted my first monster musk, then headed to Pierre, who sold me enough pumpkins to fill up all the empty sprinkler spots. I shoved a chocolate cake into Jody's face for her birthday, then visited Emily's sewing machine with a piece of cloth and some cheese to tailor a little mouse shirt. I hadn't realized it at the time, but this is a shirt you can get a character creation, and I mainly wanted to focus on the ones you can't choose at the very start of the game. Oh well, I still look adorable. After planting the pumpkins, I headed to the mines, doused myself in monster musk, and went happily on my merry way, loving the huge swarms of dust sprites. Oh look, a special slime. Did it drop A, thermal boots? B, a lead rod? Or C, a forest sword? If you guessed any of those answers, you're wrong. It was another freaking glow ring. What is this? That night, I got level 10 in mining and went with the prospector profession. Day 68 started with me getting a mini shipping bin in the mail from Lewis for having completed the crop order quest as well as a good amount of money for my quest log. I got the last fish row I needed and cursed the rainbow trout as I brought the row straight to the community center, completing the fish farmer's bundle and getting a stupid worm bin. After that, I bought two rabbits from Marnie, Dolce and Gabbana. I was unsure about the spelling again and was pretty sure there was a letter missing, so I guessed and added another N. Ah, well wrong consonant, but I feel like it's basically tradition at this point. I bought some wood from Robin and got her to build me a shed, then visited the dwarf to buy the weathered floor recipe and their rare crow. Look, we're twinsies! 
Then I used another monster musk and went down into the iron levels again, where I got the monster slayer achievement for death sprites at the very end of the night. Level 9 combat. Day 69 was pretty nice. I gathered all the batteries from yesterday's lightning storm and was able to harvest more cranberries, then found my new little wabbits. I wanted to further expand my cloth production, so I bought another sheep and named her baby doll, like the dress. While I was there, I got loose shorts for some new drip. Emily was asking for a frozen tear and Clint opened all my geodes and agreed to upgrade my hoe to gold. I used Emily's sewing machine and a gold bar to tailor the lucky purple shorts, gave Abigail a birthday amethyst, then got to show off my new shorts to Lewis. I visited the hat mouse and bought a trucker's hat to match my casual britches. I was tired of looking at the exclamation mark above the rainbow trout pond, so I emptied it, even though I didn't have a different fish to put in, and quickly sold all those a-holes. Day 70, I was able to harvest some pumpkins and the shed was done. I immediately commissioned an upgrade from Robin, then let Pam whisk me to the desert to put the solar essence into the dragon skull. While I was there, I traded in the few jades I had for staircases since it was a Sunday, and visited Sandy and found one of the shirts you can only buy from her. At least I thought so, but I'm not so sure anymore. How did these two look so similar? Back in the valley, I visited Marlin and Gil, selling all of my stupid glow rings and the other gear I had collected. Gil gave me the hard hat and the burglar's ring, then I crafted as many kegs as I could, put them in the little shed, and filled them up with pumpkins, wheat, and some hops. I always get a little jolt of hope whenever I kill a wilderness golem, but I'm always disappointed. Day 71 started with Jody's invitation that never really feels like one. After getting my club member card from the lumber pile, I headed back to the desert, but only because it was Sandy's birthday. She was selling another shirt, but it's one you can tailor yourself, so I didn't get it. Lies, Sandy, lies! I picked up my gold hoe from Clint, then picked up the Juicy Bugs Wanted quest from the Special Orders board. For the rest of the day, I dove into the mines with a monster musk. I was in good spirits, because with my new burglar's ring, not only would I get a lot more bug meat, but I would also have double the chances to get an ancient seed drop, which of course I did not get. Yeah, you wouldn't drop anything interesting either, would you? Level 9 Foraging I hurriedly mustered up 9 things I could add to my Grange display on day 72 and went to town. I mingled with the rest of the townsfolk and ate a burger while Lewis was judging my display. I won first place, obviously. After beating the strength game, I consistently bet half what I had on green and won each time, so I quickly had enough star tokens to get the rare crow, the fedora, the 100 hay, and the star drop. McQueen gave birth to a baby sheep that night, which I called Lagerfeld. Day 73, the kegs outside were ready, and I was able to craft some more, so I put them all in the fully upgraded shed. I'll fix the layout as soon as they're all finished processing. I went to Emily's and wanted something intimidating, so I used a beer to make a black leather jacket and an apricot to tailor relaxed pants that I dyed to make them almost black. I hung out with the cool kids for a while and wondered about where Alec's obsession with his hair comes from. Then I went to the mines, used the monster musk, and thrashed at every bug I found. After kill, after kill, after kill, I finally found a friggin' ancient seed. It's unbelievable how long that took. I continued to mine copper for a help wanted quest from Clint, and then the bugs were so scared of me that they dropped a prismatic shard. I knew my outfit would work its magic. Dolce or Gabbana had dropped their first rabbit's foot on day 74. I made more kegs and kegged more hops, then asked Robin to build a second shed. I bought as much copper ore as I could to still be able to afford an iridium axe upgrade, then headed to Emily, who danced for me. I used a pizza to tailor a party hat for the celebratory occasion of going to the museum and handing in the prismatic shard and the ancient seed. Gingham and I handed in the rabbit's foot for the enchanter's bundle, completing it and getting five gold bars as a reward. I dished out a diamond to Marnie for her birthday, then took a hundred bug meats to the pier and put them in the barrel next to Willie's. That night, I played hide and seek with two shadow brutes, who both lost badly. The three sweet gem berries were ready to be harvested on day 75. I shipped one, bought the snowman rare crow from the traveling cart lady, gave another sweet gem berry to Master Cannoli in exchange for a star drop, and handed in the last one to the rare crops bundle in the community center, completing the pantry. I got a preserves jar as a reward, watched the Junimos put up the fourth star, then went to the desert and bought 116 star fruit seeds to fill the greenhouse tomorrow. It was an otherwise uneventful day, except for that I got an iridium bar drop from a shadow brute on my farm that night. Thank you little Junimos! 
day 76 was another kind of boring day. Quite a few pumpkins and yams were ready for harvest, some of which were immediately kegged. I was only able to make three iridium sprinklers, but planted all of the starfruit seeds in my new greenhouse. I'm an idiot and forgot the ancient seed I had worked so hard to get. I went to Krobus, unsure of the day when he sells iridium sprinklers. It's Fridays, not Saturdays. So I bought a star drop instead. Pierre sold me 80 bok choy seeds that I planted on the farm, then I tailored a field snack into a denim jacket. Day 77 was a super good luck day. After kegging some pumpkins and selling pale ale, I went to the mines to buy bombs from the dwarf, then went to give Robin a goat cheese for her birthday. Clint agreed to upgrade my watering can to gold, then I asked Pam to take me to the desert. Today's Skull Caverns run wasn't too great. I wasn't getting as lucky with the drop shafts or ladders, and floor 42 was a spiral floor with a staircase already spawned at the center. I didn't get any treasure room floors, but at least a pepper rex dropped a dino egg. Only made it down to level 85 before passing out. Day 78 was another very good luck day, and I wanted to try a Skull Caverns run again. I quickly put the dino egg into the incubator, then got Pam to jog to the bus stop. At the desert, I popped a spicy eel and went to the casino. Bought a hundred key coins and hit up the calico spin machines. I got a triple cherry on my third spin, so I was like, okay, and was able to start betting a hundred key coins on each spin. I was quickly racking up points and soon had the 18,000 coins I needed to buy the rare crow and the top hat, which made me feel a lot better about my chances in the Skull Caverns today. My fancy hat matched the fancy loot I got, including two prismatic shards and an iridium sprinkler from the chest on level 100, passed out on level 103. After taking a closer look at my loot, I started day 79 by picking my cranberries. I put the sprinkler in my greenhouse and saw that my apple tree had produced apples. I kicked some pumpkins, went to Pierre's to sell my cranberries and mayos, and decided I wanted my fit to reflect how privileged I was feeling. So I tailored a dried starfish into a golden shirt. I'm feeling myself. Gingham got the party hat, then we picked up the gold watering can and opened geodes at Clint's. At the special orders board, I picked up the biome balance quest, then went to the community center to finish the fodder bundle with three apples and got a heater as a reward. Robin agreed to upgrade my second shed and I crafted three more iridium sprinklers, because I can't count, and as many kegs as I could. The kegs were put into the shed and filled with more pumpkins, and the two missing sprinklers were put in the greenhouse. That night, a new baby sheep was born, and I named her Corduroy, spelt horribly wrong. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. Evelyn was wearing a lovely lilac outfit when she taught me the recipe for garden pots. Almost all of my crops were ready to be picked, then I caked as much as I could. I picked up a help wanted quest for Jody to give her a smallmouth bass and visited George, who got a leak for his birthday. I stayed to watch some TV with him, then immediately fished up the smallmouth bass as Jody was walking by. Perfect. I went to Emily's and tailored a shirt with the barite and a flat-topped hat with some stuffing from the trash to get a bit more into the Thanksgiving season, then talked to stupid Alex about his stupid hair. That's not even a question, Alex. That's just too much information. Gingham and I spent the rest of the day at the lake working on the biome balance quest, and thanks to a bubble spot, I was able to finish it pretty quickly. Please just give me the hat. Not much happened on day 81. Demetrius sent me the farm computer recipe in the mail, then I went to Clint's with 5 iridium bars and got the last hoe upgrade. It was a Thursday, so I went to Sandy's shop and bought 116 deluxe speed grows to put on the starfruits in the greenhouse. I went to Robin's to move the buildings on my farm around and commissioned her to build a mill. Purely for aesthetic reasons, not because I need it. I worked on the farm layout for the rest of the day, making another crop area in the lower left quadrant and taking down sprinklers I wouldn't need anymore, since it would be winter soon. All of day 82 was used to work on the layout of the animal area. I was envisioning a place dedicated to my true calling, so I put down some chests and moved the looms from my barn outside. The chests will store my tailoring goods. It's far from finished and the main piece is missing, but it's a good start. I also crafted an iridium band so now I'm even more deadly. I was so mad on day 83. It was the Spirits Eve festival, so I wouldn't be allowed into town, meaning I couldn't tailor an outfit on the day specifically dedicated to dressing up. What kind of designer am I? Many kegs were finished processing, then I decided to use the rest of the day to spam level 81 in the mines and get as much fiber as I could, and had almost 200 by 9.30. 
It was so nice to see all the villagers in their costumes, but it also made me even more salty. After getting the rare crow, the jack-o'-lantern recipe, and the golden pumpkin, I went back home and spawned right in front of a wilderness golem. Still no living hat. Day 84 was the last day of fall and the final cranberry harvest of the season was ready. I was able to keg more pumpkins, but had to start switching to bok choy. At Emily's, I tailored the costume I would have worn yesterday if they had let me. A shirt with bow from an orpiment and a witchy hat from the golden pumpkin I had gotten. Okay, I guess I wouldn't have been able to wear exactly this outfit since I didn't have the golden pumpkin yet, but the fashion lady couldn't change her fashion and she was still peed. After picking up my fully upgraded hoe, I spend the rest of this rainy day fishing for catfish money. The first day of winter started off wonderfully. All of the cranberries and pumpkin juice put me over the threshold to becoming a millionaire. I took down all of the sprinklers, lightning rods, and scarecrows at the top of the farm. A shadowy figure ran away from me on my way into town, but I found it in a bush. And right before walking into Clint's, I finally got the garbage hat. After handing in my watering can and five iridium bars, I went straight back to my farm and got a piece of trash to tailor the trash shirt at Emily's. Guess who I'm cosplaying as and leave a comment! I got the cave patrol quest to slay 50 death sprites, then went to Krobus with a birthday horseradish, but he was brawling with the dwarf. Not on his birthday. I spent the rest of the day looking for a crocus, a holly, and a nautilus shell, which were the last things I needed for the community center, but there were zero forageables to be found. I wanted to really get into the frosty spirit with a new outfit on day 86. After crafting another loom because I was starting to get so much wool, Gingham and I galloped to the hat mouse to buy a bowler hat that was unlocked when I hit 1 million gold, picking up a crocus and a holly along the way. Then we went to Emily's and used an ancient drum to tailor a regal mantle. I begrudgingly picked up the help wanted quest from Alex to get a quartz, then got 30 winter seeds for completing the winter foraging bundle and completed the crafts room. My oak resin farm was ready, so I crafted more kegs and completely filled up my keg shed and started to fill up the second one. That night, the Junimos repaired the bridge. More kegs were ready on day 87. I refilled them with the last of the bok choy and strawberries. I bought an auto grabber and a heater from Marnie and put them in the barn and coop, then used a caviar to tailor the fashion hat. Giving Alex the quartz hurt my soul, but I want the big help achievement for doing 40 help wanted quests. These 75G do not cover the compensation for pain and suffering. I picked up my iridium watering can, then looked for Linus to give him a birthday coconut and found him in the spa. Poor guy must have been cold. I spent the rest of the day in the mines killing dust sprites with the help of Monster Musk and started getting secret notes, including my favorite one from Mr. Key, challenging me to get to level 100 in the Skull Caverns. The cave patrol quest was quickly finished and got me 6,000 G. Clint sent me the geode crusher recipe in the mail on day 88. Thanks, I hate it. My first starfruit harvest was finally ready and most of them were kegged straight away. I wanted to give Pam the pale ale she had asked four weeks ago, but chugged it right in front of her, then drunkenly stumbled to Caroline to give her the pumpkin she wanted. I turned a hellvite into a classy top, then Pam drove me to the desert, where I spent 100,000 G on starfruit seeds. After finally planting the single ancient seed in the greenhouse and filling the rest of the spots with starfruit seeds, I went into the quarry mine, fought my way through the haunted skulls, and got the golden scythe. That means I have all my tools fully upgraded, at least until the 1.6 update comes out. Spent the rest of the night mining the quarry until it was time for bed. The traveling cart lady was selling garlic on day 89, which I immediately bought so I could turn it into a seed for Ginger Island. At the beach, I finally found a nautilus shell. Gingham and I rode up to the community center straight away, handed it into the field research bundle, and completed the entire community center. <laughs> Goodbye, little friends! I knew this day called for a very special outfit, so I thought long and hard and couldn't think of anything more special than a prismatic shard that can turn into a variety of different things when tailored. I took one to Emily's and tailored a prismatic shirt. Ooh. Next up, Gingham took me to the Hat Mouse, where I bought a tiara. Headwear fit for someone who single-handedly fixed up the entire community and looked good while doing it. Gingham got my fashion hat, then I took a trout soup down to the tip of Arrowhead Island and caught the last legendary fish, the Glacier Fish. 
Day 90, I finally moved my crafting area down away from the shipping bin and started working on the layout at the top of the farm. My dino had hatched and I called it croco, like crocodile leather. After watching Pierre knock out Morris, I tailored a celebratory blue outfit for kicking out Joja, using a chocolate cake and a kyanite. The rest of my starfruits were ready for harvest, then I went to the railroad to start the magic ink quest. Krobus unlocked the mutant buckler for me, where I got the dark talisman and fished up a slime jack. Then I fished up a void mayo and two void salmon in the witch's swamp, gave the henchman the mayo, got the magic ink from the witch's hut, and brought it to the wizard, who gave me access to his magical buildings. I immediately got two Junimo huts. I replanted more starfruit seeds and put a void salmon into my empty fish pond at the end of the day. I got tons of letters with recipes in the mail and an invitation from Willie to see what was in the back of his shop on day 91. I wanted to wear something fun today, so I made a fried egg and tailored a fried egg shirt. Then I took all my geodes to Clint and unfortunately only the mudstone was new. I donated it and some artifacts from dig spots to Gunther, then went to Willie's and found him drowning in crabs. He also showed me his dilapidated boat, but lucky for him, I had everything to fix it. I decided to spend the rest of the day working on my foraging skill and deforested all of Cindersap Forest. Robin and Willie used the materials I gave them to repair the boat overnight. I had learned from my Spirit's Eve mistake and had pre-tailored an outfit for today's Festival of Ice. I put on the fishing vest made with a largemouth bass and the sou'wester I had bought from the hat mouse yesterday while I was chopping wood. I used the time before the festival to continue working on the farm a bit, putting down more pathing and crafting more furnaces. At the festival, I talked to everyone, then started the ice fishing competition. The other competitors looked like amateurs in comparison to me and my fishing gear. Of course I won, with seven fish. I got different types of tackle and the real prize, the sailor's cap. Day 93 was finally the big day. After gathering up all the tools and resources I would need for the island, I made a detour to the sewing machine to tailor the perfect outfit using seaweed. I put on my kelp shirt and the sailor's cap and looked super tropical. When I left Emily's house, Alex tried to ruin this glorious day by confiding in me while I stood freezing my little butt off in my seaweed garb. I don't care, Alex. I'm getting frostbite. When he was finally done, I quickly took a look at the special orders board and chose the fragments of the past quest. Then Willie whisked me away to Ginger Island. I went into the jungle, where I found Leo in his hut, wearing his adorable parrot onesie. I know my walnut route by heart and was able to quickly find enough walnuts to gain access to the island farm. By the end of the night, I had cleared off most of the farmland and had collected enough walnuts to get the parrots to repair the island farmhouse where I slept that night. I cleared off the rest of the farmland, planted the garlic, wheat, and melon seeds, then went on my first run through the volcano on day 94, which turned out super lucky. I bought the warp totem and ginger ale recipes from the dwarf on floor 5, found a huge collection of cinder shard nodes, got 5 dragon's teeth by the end of it, and to top it all off, I got a hot java ring from the chest on floor 9. After combining my rings at the forge, the enchantment I got on my sword put a small damper on my happiness. I got haymaker. But I forged 2 rubies I had into it for more damage at least. I fished up the lava eel and had collected enough golden walnuts to get the bridge to the dig site. After freeing Professor Snail, I started hacking away at the bone notes to work on the bone fragments quest, but it got late, so I headed to bed, very satisfied with my loot. I spent day 95 on the island working on the dig site, mining bone nodes, fishing in the river trying to get the spine, which didn't work, and panning for the fossilized tail, which also didn't work. I was able to give the professor two leg bones, the rib cage, and the snake skull. Since it was raining, I gathered up all of the gems that I had taken to the island and found the gem bird that dropped an aquamarine for me. I went to the jungle gem shrine and figured out the configuration pretty quickly, considering I only had one to go off of. I had already had my seaweed on for a pretty long time and was ready to put on something new, so I headed back to the mainland to tailor tomorrow's outfit. I was able to collect more oak resin and craft more kegs, and Linus showed me how to craft wild bait. Day 96 started off with a shed full of wine and juice. Mm-mm, good. I finally saw my animals again and took care of them, gave my void salmon five void essence and my sturgeon three omni geodes, and gave the wizard a void essence he had asked for. Using winter root, I tailored an orange bow shirt, 
put on the watermelon band I had bought from the hat mouse, and dyed my relaxed shorts a hot pink to go with it. It doesn't fit the wintry vibes of Pelican Town, but it'll be a good fit for the island. I gave Gunther 100 bone fragments and got 3,500 G as a reward. Back at the island, I wanted to collect more walnuts to get access to the island resort. I talked to a woman, whose hair looked a lot like the shirt I had been wearing for the past few days, who gave me an old picture that would have to stay in a chest for now. After completing the gem puzzle, I went to the dig site, panned up a fossilized tail, and tried to fish up the spine again, but it just wouldn't show itself, so I'd have to come back another time. I still couldn't get the dang fossilized spine on day 97, so I left to do another volcano run. I thought the hot java ring was broken at first, since the monsters weren't dropping anything. While thinking about which mod might be causing the bug, I got the first coffee, so apparently it was just a luck problem. Progress through the volcano was slow, but I got to the rare chest on floor 9, which gave me mermaid boots, forged a third ruby into my galaxy sword, and made it to bed just in time. Finally got level 10 combat, and chose the brute profession. The next day, I fished up a lionfish from the ocean, then gave the parrots 20 golden walnuts to build the resort. The eastern side of the island became accessible where I got three more walnuts and fished in the pirate's grotto until the stingray was mine. I tried my luck at fishing up the fossilized spine again, but still no dice. Back on my farm in Pelican Town, half of the starfruit was ready in the greenhouse. I picked them and put them in the chest in my keg shed, then went to the saloon to give Harvey a birthday coffee. The rest of the evening was spent smelting bars and crafting kegs. The other half of my starfruit were also ready on day 99, so I picked them all and filled up the whole greenhouse with more of them. I also finally planted some winter forage seeds, then went to Robin, had to explain to Demetrius that tomatoes are vegetables, and handed over 150 hardwood and 50,000 G to commission another house upgrade. I was feeling rich, so I bought 600 copper and 500 iron ores and coal. Emily's rock rejuvenation quest was finally up for grabs again. Yay! I went to her house and tailored my outfit for the day. A fishing hat with a scorpion carp I had kept for this occasion, and a fish shirt with a bream. At the night market, I grabbed a coffee, the exclusive painting, because my house needs to be swaggy too at some point, and then entered the submarine and fished my little heart out, until I had caught a spookfish, a blobfish, and a midnight squid, earning the master angler achievement. Yes, that I am. Day 100 started off right with a star drop in the mail from Willy. I got to work smelting the ores I bought yesterday, then headed to Emily's to tailor an obligatory outfit that I don't want to have to wear for too long. A pink shirt made with dolomite and a blobfish mask with one of the blobfish from yesterday. I tried to max out the last skill, foraging, so I chopped the stumps in the secret woods and picked up every stupid holly I could find but unfortunately I didn't make it. I gave Emily all of the gems for her rock rejuvenation quest and got 1000 G, which was kind of a ripoff, but the real prize would arrive tomorrow. At the night market, I bought some decorations for the farm and went to the magic shop boat to buy the cone hat to replace the blobfish mask. I wanted to go to the mermaid show next and I didn't have to make it more awkward than it already is. I watched the show and got the pearl, bought Lupini's painting, and spent the last hour of the day putting down a bit more pathing. Day 101 was just as exciting as day 100, if not even more so, because I got a letter from Pierre saying I could buy bouquets, which meant that we had reached eight hearts with Emily. Obviously, I'm going to romance the most fashionable villager in Stardew Valley, as if you couldn't have already guessed it. My beloved had also sent me this sewing machine in the mail, which was put right in the middle of my design corner. Today called for another celebratory outfit, tailored using my brand new sewing machine. So I used a fish taco from the saloon to make a green party hat, an ocean stone to make a green shirt, and my last prismatic shard turned into prismatic pants. I felt extremely fancy while giving the wizard a purple mushroom for his birthday. I decided today was the perfect day to visit the Shrine of Illusions for the first time. I dyed my hair green because it's my favorite color. Plus, it matches my fit. I bought a bouquet from Pierre, found Emily guiding the ladies of the valley through a meditation session, then asked her if she would be my girlfriend, and she accepted. I went to decorate the design area on my farm, crafted more kegs, and added them to the second shed, which was also getting full. After buying the third Lupini painting, I worked on my farm layout for the rest of the night. My house was even bigger on day 102. 
I tailored a frozen tear into a dark jacket and put on an eye patch that's unlocked at the Hat Mouse for getting the Master Angler achievement. I collected my oak resin, played around with the layout for a bit, and commissioned a new fish pond for my lava eel. Emily was at the island, and I happily chatted with her before finding a golden walnut behind a tree, which meant I had 10 golden walnuts and was able to have the parrots build the island trader. I visited the pirates in the evening, since it was an even day. Gross, dude. I had put on my outfit for exactly this occasion, and looked piratey enough to be offered some mead. After three rounds of darts, I was three golden walnuts richer. After fishing in the Digsite River for hours, I finally fished up the fossilized spine on day 103. The Manses of the valley were visiting the island, including Gus, so I bought his recipe for tropical curry and a gold star wine right away. Seeing Harvey in his speedo kind of made me waver on my decision to romance Emily, but I stayed faithful and went back to my farm. I crafted five bone mills, which I actually find kind of useful, and 30 more kegs. I kegged all the star fruit I had, but it wasn't even enough to fill them all up. I'm looking forward to be able to plant stuff on Ginger Island, but want to wait until I've gotten the two snake spines before filling up all the spots. I just smelted more bars and put down more pathing for the rest of the day. Friggin' serpents are starting to spawn on my farm at night. Good grief. I tailored one of my favorite outfits on day 104. I used crab cakes to make a crab cake shirt and a bug steak to make goggles. I look amazing. I crafted five flute blocks, since it would be raining on Ginger Island tomorrow, then wanted to visit Evelyn on her birthday. Before I could give her a present, George asked me for medical advice. I must look like I'm medically knowledgeable in my new getup. Once I gave Evelyn her diamond, I headed to the island volcano and made sure to kill as many tiger slimes as I could for a chance at the tiger slime hat. It didn't drop, unfortunately, but I did get another hot java ring. Day 105 was kind of boring. Even despite my enhanced vision, I still couldn't find a dig spot with a snake vertebrae. I played the mermaid a little tune and was gifted five golden walnuts for it, then went back to Pelican Town. I accepted Pam's help wanted quest for a ruby, which worked out well since I had one in my pocket, and handed it to her on my way to my farm. After opening geodes and donating the few new things I had, Pierre sold me some basic cooking ingredients. I took care of my fashionable animals and used some of their eggs and milk to get started on the cooking recipes. Some of my forageables were fully grown on day 106, and while harvesting them, the UI mod told me I had leveled up. A special outfit was in order, so I tailored a ginger ale into ginger overalls, a piece of ginger into the forager's hat, and dyed my relaxed fit pants to match. Look at my adorable forager outfit! I chose Linus Community Cleanup Quest from the Special Orders Board and shipped off to Ginger Island. All of my crops were fully grown, which the gourmand frog loved. They gave me 15 more golden walnuts, and I had the parrots construct my farm obelisk. After another volcano run, I had a few more golden walnuts and secret notes. I was curious to see how many walnuts I had collected, and walked right through the door. Apparently, Mr. Key was a fan of my work, and I did have to admit that I was digging his hat. The perfection tracker told me I was only at 33%. This'll take a while. I wasn't sure if I'd get to it, but I picked up his Skull Caverns invasion quest. I was back in the volcano on day 107, and had found enough walnuts by floor 5 to unlock the drop shaft. A prismatic shard dropped from an iridium node, and on level 9 I noticed that I had found a petrified bat at some point, which was awesome. At the forge, I gave my sword enchantment another go, just to get the second worst one. Bug killer. The island trader gave me a banana sapling for 5 dragon's teeth, and the deluxe retaining soil recipe for 50 cinder shards. I planted the banana sapling and a mango sapling that had dropped from one of the enemies in the volcano in my greenhouse back in Pelican Town. I even got to kill two wilderness golems today, but neither of them dropped the living hat. I'm starting to lose hope, to be honest. The star fruit in the greenhouse was ready the next day and immediately kegged. I didn't have enough seeds to replace them, but would have to go to the desert on a different day, since Pam had abandoned her post and was on the island. I was yearning to change my wardrobe, so I went to the hat mouse to buy the official cap, put on a belted coat tailored from an autumn's bounty, and my trusty farmer's pants. My green hair kind of clashed with the blue vibes, so I went to the Shrine of Illusions and got dark blue hair to match. I went to Robin's, moved some buildings around, and finally gave them a paint job. I wanted it to be whimsical yet stylish, and think the true beauty will become apparent in spring when it finally stops snowing. 
Then I just added more pathing to my farm for the rest of the day. It was the Feast of the Winter Star on day 109. I tailored a festive shirt with a pumpkin pie I had cooked a few nights ago and put on a Santa hat I had bought from the Hat Mouse. I also decided to put on the rubber boots I still had in the chest so that I also had a pop of Christmassy green. Before the feast, I quickly popped into Sandy's shop to buy more starfruit seeds, then headed to town. I was assigned Caroline and gave her a summer spangle. My gift giver was the fashionable Evelyn, who gave me cookies, which I thought was adorable and very fitting for my Santa alter ego. I planted the seeds in my greenhouse and harvested my very first ancient fruit of this playthrough. I wasn't quite ready to get rid of the Santa outfit, so it'll stay for day 110. I still had the cookies from Evelyn and wanted to have my Santa moment, so I ate them and washed it down with a big jug of milk, because that's what a Santa would do. Marnie sold me a little piggy I named Chew, as in Jimmy Chew. Choo Choo. I was in the Santa spirit, so... Jazz got a fairy rose, Emily an aquamarine, Clint got a topaz for his birthday, as well as an iron bar he had asked for, and Gus got an orange and the albacore he had asked for. I wanted to quickly fish up 20 pieces of trash for the community cleanup quest on level 100 of the mines. Don't mind me, just a lady in a Santa costume fishing in a fiery pit. While I was there, I hooked and caught not one, not two, but three lava eels. What are the chances? After putting 20 pieces of trash in the dumpster, I got 500g as a reward. At home, I crafted 30 more kegs and was able to collect the starfruit wine that was finished. I didn't have too many more fruits to put in, but oh well, we'll get that ball rolling again in spring. Both of the sheds were now full, so I started adding kegs to the quarry. A new fit was tailored on day 111. A logo cap from one of the lava eels from yesterday and a hematite to make a vintage polo shirt, because why not? I took a golden coconut and my artifacts to Clint. A fossilized skull popped out, which was perfect, since I could complete the big animal fossil at Professor Snail's museum. At Robin's, I bought five stacks of wood and one stack of stone, then commissioned a well. I still had money to spend, so I went back to Clint's and bought 500 copper ores and spent the rest of my money on iron ores. I handed the petrified bat and the skull to Professor Snail, getting six walnuts and a banana sapling in return. After doing half of a volcano run and trading 20 regular coconuts for two golden ones, I went back to Pelican Town and went to bed. The last day of the year arrived, and I wanted it to be special. Today's outfit had to be perfect, so I used an emerald to make a green shirt, a dino mayo to make dinosaur pants, and a dino egg to make a dino hat. I still had the Skull Caverns invasion quest and wanted to dominate it in style. I bought 100 bombs from the dwarf and traded jades in for staircases and 10 iridium bars for the recipe to craft desert warp totems at the desert trader. Every time the royal serpents came at me, I got a little jolt of fear. I slayed my brethren with a heavy heart, but really needed those kill counts. Once my staircases ran out, the real mayhem commenced. Some floors felt like I had put on three monster musks at once, making it very hard to look for staircases. I bombed, and I fought, and I slayed, and I made it to level 92, where I passed out as 2am rolled around. It was kind of disappointing, but I felt I had given it my best shot. Y'all, that was my 112 days in Stardew Valley. I achieved all of the goals I had set for myself, most of them even in the first 100 days, and even surpassed some of them. I earned over 2 million gold and had almost two whole sheds filled with kegs. It was especially surprising to see that a lot of my relationships were thriving, even though I didn't really put effort into them. Most importantly, I was keeping Grandpa's legacy alive by making sure to stay swaggy. I think my favorite outfit is a tie between the Forger getup and the Goggles and Crab Cakes shirt. What's your favorite? I already have a few ideas for the next year in Stardew Valley, especially when it comes to showing off the wardrobe I've amassed, but definitely let me know if you would like to see another 100 days and if you have any ideas for Drip Farm. I don't really know what to do with the upper part of it yet and would like to set more drippy goals for myself, so any suggestions would be much appreciated. And by the way, if you commented I was cosplaying as Leap a lot in the trash outfit, you were wrong. I was obviously Alex. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Bye y'all!